It must have been in 1996 or 1997 when I got a hold of this CD, which contained a copy of the software Bryce 2. This software introduced me to 3D modeling and world creation. I loved this program's intuitive and schematic user interface, and I was intrigued by the many intricate buttons and dials for modeling, shading, and sculpting landscapes. I decided to recreate this user interface in Blender as a tribute to the memory of this mesmerizing tool, which was well ahead of its time. Enjoy. Okay, so here we go. This is the start of the modeling process. Here I'm going to be modeling the, uh, the main palette on the top of the user interface here. Um, I should say also that Bryce does still exist as a software. You can, you can still download it and run it. Um, and so this, uh, this toolbar here was the way that you would create objects in the software and you would you just click on them and they would appear inside of the 3D space. So you can see there's this kind of weird spinning top object here. Um, but we had other more commonly used primitive objects like the sphere, the spheroid, and there were also these little planes that you could use to create water, sky, earth, and then there was also a mountain range that you could click and that would create a terrain. And the terrain had its own editor that you could use to modify the height map. And yeah, so I put these spotlights in as well because the whole thing is, the whole UI looks like it's been lit with spotlights from multiple angles. You've got like sh relatively sharp shadows that are overlapping with each other on the shelves. And so here we've got cubes, we've got cuboids, we've got cones, we've got squish cones, we've got tool cones. In later versions of Bryce, they limited the number of primitive objects that you had in this toolbar, but at least in this version, Bryce 2, it was pretty much a like, cornucopia of different objects. And here we go, modeling the plane. These were just flat disks that you could add to your scene. These yellow objects at the end here, these were... Um, these were spotlights that you could use. So, oh, sorry, the first one, the sphere, is a point light. The second one is a, is a spotlight. The third one is a square spotlight, um, which I had to use an area light to do the indicator for. And the the final one is a um, it's a square projection, a parallel projection square light. So we have these UI elements. And then we also have this really weird bit here, which is the, there's a Vitruvian man. And the Vitruvian man is a, kind of like a meme that pops up in some other of uh, Kai Krauss's uh, UIs. Um, I don't know if it's in Kai Power Tools, but it's somewhere, it's in one of these softwares. And the Vitruvian man was a button that you could click. And when you clicked on the Vitruvian man, it would open up the image editor and it would allow you to bring in an image into the scene. So much like in Blender you have um, import mesh plane, image to mesh plane, does a similar function. Here we go, I'm going back into the uh, shader editor here and I'm tweaking some of the materials for the uh, mountains and the rocks. And I'm using that little image in the bottom left as my reference, rather grainy little image. Okay, and now I'll leave you in the very capable hands of the Bryce tutorial makers of years gone by. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you about a program called Bryce. Um, Bryce is a piece of software by a company called uh, Daz 3D and they produce a lot of uh, type of software. 3D software. Okay, now that we have a basic Bryce Island, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to import uh, a two-dimensional picture. simple tutorial for Bryce users out there. There are also tutorials of putting liquid in a glass using Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, and Maya. I first started using Bryce in 2005 when I was asked by my then employers a Swedish construction company based in the Middle East to create a small documentary film about our epic scale project. Uh, Alright, listen up. We're going to be making a 3D anaglyph of our snowman project. Alright, so I've created my snowman. I've got it rendered. It looks very nice. And I'm ready to make a, 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 another image of it.
Okay, one thing that tends to confuse people in Bryce is the animation. And the animation is not perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a few basics here. Uh, it's going to look like it belongs in the scene. It's going to uh, be have a three-dimensional look to it. Um, and so let me show you that technique, and that will be... I'm going to add some texture, maybe something metallic and reflective so that we can get a better view of what happens in this turns. How we're going to complete the Bryce Island. Uh, first step is to go find a picture. So I'm going to go into Google Chrome. Alright, and maybe I'll add another piece here, a rock. I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> We'll see what happens here. And if I go to create new, it's going to automatically create the exact size file that I need. Okay, so now I have my basic shapes and I have my timeline down here, my scrub time. If I start to drag this over. Step 3. Next, duplicate the cylinder by using the menus edit slash duplicate command or by clicking CTRND. You will now have two cylinders. Enjoy. Make the duplicate smaller than the original by dragging the resize control in the edit tab. Resize again by dragging the top of the resize control to make it extend out of the first cylinder. Step 4. Now make the second cylinder negative by selecting the and choosing negative from the menu. Step 5. Using your mouse. Drag the marquee around the two cylinders to select them both. Once selected, click G to group the two cylinders together. If you look in your preview window, you will see the well, negative cylinder cut out a positive cylinder to form a glass shape. Control V and it's going to paste Step the six. image now it's time to put the on the file the for me. I'm going to select the group and select select. The next to the preview window. Next, select well. the glass texture by right. clicking the glass material in the presets. Now select moderate glass material. Step 7. Now that you have made your glass. Source Codex, this is your lucky day. You got me on a good mood, and I'm going to give you your very own specialized individual tutorial on how to animate uh, in Bryce. Whatever you want to do with it, uh, you can also export your environment to uh, other 3D packages such as Maya or uh, 3D Studio Max. Um, but um, there's going to be a few restrictions here because animation is a huge topic. Bryce itself is a huge topic. So we're just going to stick with the basics. If you're familiar with any other type of uh, 3D software, you should be uh, right at home in Bryce. Um, um, so what you're seeing at the moment is the default scene from Bryce. There's a camera in the distance here. And you're looking at it from the director's point of view. You can tell which camera you're using, either the director or the camera, through this icon here. And you can click on it and select the camera view. The director doesn't have an icon or anything else to represent what it is. It's just an invisible view. So you can toggle between these two views to see what's going on in your scene. Ultimately, you want to render your scene through the camera. But you can render your scene through the director. Render your scene through the camera. Right, so there's a couple of things to know about animation. First off, um, down the bottom here, I showed you this thing called Bryce several times before, and I'm going to show you an update what happened. I showed it five years ago when I found it in France. Okay, welcome to Bryce. This is our very first Bryce tutorial. So what we're going to be learning today is how to, to create some objects. Hey folks, DJ Bob Light here. I'm going to show you how to make these crazy 90s uh, surreal landscapes that you see on a lot of 
Got 90s drum and bass albums, house, rave posters. If I create an object in here and move it around and change it, what this new version now has in it, let me just put a whole bunch of them here. Give them materials, change them from wireframe to rendered image. Okay, here's, here's this thing. I can now move this little trackball to move around. And look at our world from different views. So right now we have the create menu open. There's a couple of planes up at the top. This is sky. Good thing is, it's very easy to do this. What you need is a program called Bryce. And watch this, how I make an animation. Literally within seconds, I move the time somewhere else, and I say, make me a thing this long. You also find that if you click one, like water, you will see the preview change. This is our rendered image preview. Bryce has been around since the 90s. I think this first version came out in 94, uh, for Mac, if I recall. And then they kept enhancing on it and iterating. It got sold a bunch of times. Um, Go to the end of it, and I say that should be, let's say that should be over here, and that should be over here, and that should be up there. This is in wireframe mode right here. We can't see what is going on yet until we click render, the render button. I think around 98 is when they added 3D with the third version of Bryce, just simply called Bryce 3D. Uh, but you need a copy of Bryce, and Daz owns Bryce currently. And now I want to show you what literally kids have done on America Online, I just talked to Steve Pace, I was on AOL when it was 60,000 people. It's now what, 12 million, something like that? Big button that says render. When you hover over things in Bryce, it will give you on the bottom right corner, or the bottom left corner down here, it will give you the name of what the tool is. It works on Windows and Mac, but not the new Macs, uh, the new M1s, so keep that in mind, and it is a 32-bit application. And they got together online, and decided to make a real project out of it. Here's, here's actually how you make a mountain, just simply paint into it. It rotates, and again, I got the whole time axis in here. If I go to erosion. So if we click render, we can tell that I've just made an ocean that goes on infinitely forever. And it looks just like Bryce 3D from 1998. There's now the entire mountain in real time changing as we go. Let me just turn this on real time. And the little line going down tells me that it's rendering. Uh, the results are, are pretty instant too. Automatic rotation. I can hit escape to go back to wireframe. It's easy to use on a surface level, but you can get very in depth with it. And here I'm now painting this mountain, unpainting the mountain. So I've just made this water plane. It shines at creating landscapes. And at different timelines create how it goes up and down. It doesn't show up like a water plane, it shows up like a grid. That's really because these are infinite for. planes. Uh, so not so much planes. They go on modeling. forever. And there it goes. This is on an itty bitty little scenes, basic machine. Or it's always the same. Now hold on a second. So you're going to need a copy of that. So right now I'm I have working a ground. Out. And I have a basic sky. Right. 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 Come on. Across the and I don't mean a standing order as much as something else. Okay, so I thought that the Bryce user interface wouldn't be complete if it weren't for a beautiful coastal organic nature scene um, modeled inside of the window of the UI. So here I'm starting to model that scene that's taken from this classic image of the Bryce, U Bryce 2 user interface that you can see in the bottom left hand there. And so I start by modeling the plane for the ocean, then I model a um, terrain for the sand bank and I add a kind of volumetric uh, mist to the under un to the water to give it some depth and then I, um, I'm adjusting the lighting and then I go through and I start to add these rocks and these rocks are just made using a subdivided plane um, here I'm creating a shader that can go on top of them I struggled a bit with the shader because it took me a little while to realize that the um, coordinate system that was used in the original image was a uh, texture that was projected straight downwards 
onto the rocks that had this kind of stretched appearance to it, which I was um, struggling with for a little while. So you can see me tweaking the shader nodes uh, for the rocks quite a lot. And you can see that they, they're the thing that take up most of the time in this process. And also what I'm doing is I'm creating a um, camera, which is a portal to that 3D space and then setting that up around the user interface. So you can see here, I can use the, I can see the UI and I can model with the landscape as a reference in the background image as well. So I'm sculpting, I'm sculpting rocks, just age, spent ages and ages sculpting the rocks, way, way too long sculpting the rocks. And eventually I start to do some of the other ones. So you can see here, I'm moving into the mid-ground um, and again, I'm using the sculpting tools to paint um, the subdivided mesh plane. And then here we go, we're getting into the background a little bit and there's this big mountain here, like this kind of volcanic thing that's sticking up and then there's a little uh, plateau or a like, more level bit of land off to the right hand side of that. And then you can see that I model another, another sand plane there in the background. Carry on sculpting further into those rocks. And this really was, this really kind of turned into a bit of a labor of love because it, I wasn't intending to spend so long, I wasn't even intending to do the background at all, but like after I saw the original thing, I just had to do it. Anyway, so here we have the user interface fly through with the final product, and then we see the landscape.